Hello and welcome. This is the end of Dude. the 2019 season, my friends. It's bittersweet, Jerm. It is bittersweet, Nate. We are at the 2019 Disc Golf Pro Tour Final. This is the back nine. This is the final card. This is it. This coverage is presented by you guys, the Founders Club, the Jomez Patreon supporters. What are we going to do without Jomez for three, I don't know, four guys. Months? Look, like, if, you're, if you're sad, I'm sad. I get it. But guess what? We've got some hot disc golf action to bring to you. Calvin Heimberg, six under through the front nine? Ooh, smoking. Chris Dickerson, four under? I mean, and Kevin Jones, that sweet finish, three birdies to close out the front nine to He's get to two under. He is in an attacking position. Drew Gibson has got to birdie every hole in the back nine, maybe even get an eagle. Yep. Yeah, it's going to come down to he's got to play hot golf. This back nine is tight, too. And we start off in a very tight hole, like you said. Hole 10, par 3. I don't know if I buy six, 396 feet, but it is a full fairway driver through the gap. You just have to pick right side or left side, and then you're just trying to slow that disc going down the hill. Calvin is going with this trusty eagle. And Calvin has gone the right side gap. I don't know if he's trying to do right side or left side, oh, but I do know that he wants that. Pulled it to part. <laughs> wow. That's he why, knew it. Sometimes you just you just don't say anything. You just pretend. Yeah, if he Ooh, didn't tell us, that. we wouldn't have known. We, <laughs> yeah. we would have thought he pured it. Well, I was standing up by the basket when I saw us come in, and all I could see was just perfection. I want a birdie count. On that eagle this year. Oh goodness gracious! Wouldn't that be awesome? Eighty-three percent. There's just like a percentage too. Oh yeah, Yeah, I would love that. Kevin Jones going back door through everything. He's inside the circle. Okay, so we're two for two in the circle. This is not an easy hole. I mean, the gap is like four feet on the left side and not really existing on the on the right side. It's five feet, but it's just hard hard to get there. Beat Chris it. Dickerson going flip up. Oh, yeah. Okay. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so we're three for three for circle one hit. Do you feel that there's more pressure for a player to like continue the card's greatness when three players ahead of you do that? It's there. Come on. We're going to go four for four, guys. I think so. Oh, oh my gosh! Oh, uh, curl up and what right. an unfortunate little roll at the yeah. end. Yeah, but that was almost the coolest ace we've ever witnessed. That would have been Sports Center <laughs> top ten for a year. Come on, Drew. We need you. Oh no. Mm. Just a little too committed. Yeah, he's walking off, holding his back. I hope that's. I mean, you just gotta. Uh, I hope he's okay. Yeah. You don't want to risk further injury. Kevin cannot make... He's exactly right. You cannot do that. He cannot make any mistakes from here on. No, especially when your two competitors are closer than you. Mm. Looking at birdie. And really, Kevin's putting is what has carried him to yeah. 1035 rated player. and Well... And just smoking lines consistently. Of course, of course. But, I mean, he, <laughs> he led the field in, in circle two putting throughout the season. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. I okay. mean, his putting really has yeah. really vaulted him into the hey, Calvin. Calvin's casually just birdied the last five holes in a row. So, that's good. Yeah. Chris Dickerson birdieing. Keep with that hot pace as we approach hole 11. Par four. 474 feet to the landing zone right about here if you can get around those two trees you're pretty much already home because it's just a straight shot to the pin from there about 230 feet from the ideal drive i think next year we might see this pin get pushed back just a bit but for the time being we've got the original tee pad the original basket placement calvin's going high speed driver right there and a good straight skip yeah had that skipped right I think it would have been a little bit out of position, but that straight skip put him into the kind of the sweet spot down the alleyway. 
And that's Chris's A2, and that looks a little early, and mm. it is. A2? Yeah. Really? Maybe a little slow for, for this drive, but. You really have to commit to a lot of power behind the A2 to get around to the sweet spot. Kevin going high speed. That's low, skip. needs a skip. And yep. gets the biggest skip I've ever seen on the hole. With this fairway having so many roots and going mm -hmm. uphill, you don't see a skip like that very often, but great shot for Kevin. KC Rock for Drew. Is he going to beat it? Yes, it does. Oh, oh catching no. the last thing. The gallery can't see what it hit, but it is back into the woods. That is an off fairway. able to focus through the honking horn distraction and get 50 feet from that spot that that's is money that is really really good from back there drew's probably gonna have to go back door i believe that is a champion avr stamped 11 time avr oh really yeah it's a pretty cool Sweet. disc he's said he got it from his buddy Derek billings from way back in the day. Even with him getting his bag stolen, he's still got all the nice ones, huh? He, he's, he's got, got hookups nice back pile. home. Yeah, he's got his homies. Kevin going long with his approach inside the circle. Calvin trying to keep up that hot streak, putting the pressure on Chris Dickerson. Like we said, this is like a match play like format. And look at that. He's going with his stable eagle, and he is hard. Oh. And if Chris doesn't want to fall three strokes back, he needs to make this big putt. Left leg up. Oh, and just like that. He's going to be three back. I'm not buying 60 feet, but I am buying a big time break. <laughs> <laughs> Hands in the air, sigh of relief. I know that feeling. I think mean, we've I'm all like been there fairy. before. I love that little jump. <laughs> <laughs> like a fairy, you think? Yeah. I do. Like, like both his legs are in the air, his arms are up. <laughs> well, the way that the, the sun was coming through the foliage here in Charlotte, this time of day, mm. this time of year. The temperature was absolutely perfect, right about 68 degrees. And it's just something special about the woods here. It just set up for a really beautiful backdrop. I love this course. Hornet's Nest Park is awesome. Like makes my heart like flutter when I hear you say that, man. It's just, uh, you know, I don't really have anything but love and just a fond memories from coming out to this place and yeah. maybe without this course i don't know if i ever continue playing disc golf i mean this was like that's amazing yeah th this place and i you know. i'm so happy i got to play against you on this course yeah we had a great battle in our round calvin heimberg six birdies in a row he is scorching this course right now and he has got three strokes of separation from the next best chris dickerson we're moving on to hole 12, par four, 651 feet, a new tee pad, a lengthened tee pad, and just makes this hole really the par four that it's always deserved to be. I'm going eagle. Oh, he slipped a little. And that. Oh, and that's it, worst case kick. Oh, this tee pad is brand new. There, It's a little slick. It, well, it is very slick. And with having to clear that fairway back there, you're uncovering a lot of stuff that we haven't packed down, and it's very muddy. Well, Drew's that, going wraith. And that is oh, no. kicked to the right. Almost and, breaking the corner. And got to give a quick shout-out to the Disc Golf Pro, uh, the <laughs> Disc Golf Club here in Charlotte. Charlotte Disc Golf Club for the work that they were able to put 
Yeah, just, I mean, they had very short notice. <laughs> I got to give a quick shout out to Stephen Belair's father, who was right next to me when he said smart shot. <laughs> Right there, when Chris threw down the middle, 370 feet, and I was like, "Yeah, it was a smart shot. It's a perfect shot. <laughs> if throwing the perfect shot's smart, then yeah." Um, but Perhaps anyways, he's talking about Chris throwing throwing the mid versus yeah. the the players before him throwing all throwing driver, and they're all in the woods. Of course. This. Let's go, dude. Oh my gosh, he's gonna get in. Calvin has left himself a 33-footer for par, I believe. He's going to save par after pitching out his second shot. And Drew unable to pitch out with his Firebird. He'll still be in a very tricky position. Kevin going, trying to go flick roller, I think. I think so, and yeah. Just getting out, is that was the goal number one. Goal number two would have been, you know, go a little bit further, but getting out is paramount. Drew is pinched. He's having to go forehand roller. And hitting one route and hitting oh, a second route as well woods. and going back to the right. And this is, this is the end of Drew Gibson's Disc Golf Pro Tour Championship as far as winning, but he is, uh, he's just trying to stay pain free at this point this is a big shot for chris needs to beat it chris dickerson all right has just returned all the pressure onto calvin's shoulders now he's getting Cal one for sure and calvin has got 33 feet left to not lose two strokes yeah. drew flicking the forehand up and this putt right here is a oh, is huge a great view. putt. And oh. just a wow. just a fraction Two too high. Swing. And uh, just, just to continue that thought, uh, the, the Charlotte Disc Golf Club had six weeks to get this course ready for a pro level event. And it required a lot of basket position changes, a lot of tee pad installations, a lot of things cut down, a lot of clearing. There were over 50 volunteers the weekend before to get this course ready. And if you enjoyed this course after six weeks of preparation, just get ready for next year where we have a whole year to prepare for this event. Tour it's, championship? It's gonna, yeah, it's already set in. Oh, sweet. Tour championship will be Love in Charlotte that. next year at Hornets Nest. Chris Dickerson, he'll he'll be there. Because right now, he's only one stroke back of Calvin Heimberg. And this final stretch is, I mean, it's really where everything goes down yep. on this course. You got that right. Hole 13, this requires the biggest drive you can possibly throw just to get to the landing zone where you could hopefully see the basket. We know, so we saw Drew Gibson get to the landing zone. He birdied it yesterday. We saw mm -hmm. Kevin Jones or Garrett Gerthy throw one so far he hit the base in two this is the only shot on the course where these players are able to just unleash and throw as far as they possibly can this was a a beautiful shot from chris dickerson this hole was this was found by john Hout. john Hout came out here for four days and he was trying to find a way to make this course gold level and he's like hey let's go down this way and um we're losing one of the best par fours in the course by skipping this hole. Traditionally, we play this tee pad to the next hole that we play, hole 14. Oh, really? As Kevin has turned his drive over into the woods, and that is a really tough spot to be. And it's a great par four. But this is a really great opportunity to open up and have these big players who can throw 600 feet yeah. put on a show for the gallery. And if you can't throw Let's 600 go, feet, the approach is... <laughs> I believe that's Eric Oakley. Uh, you, you believe? Making himself known you, in the background. <laughs> you think that's Eric? <laughs> As Calvin. 80 feet past those gas line indicators yeah, so in the fairway. 520 foot shot or... That is ideal. That and and this is Drew's Jumpman Destroyer. And this is going to be... Oh, is that going to hold oh, yeah. the turn? Yeah. Oh, jeez, oh, Louise. Oh, my gosh. 
Oh, wow. <laughs> nice, another 30 or 40 feet past Calvin. That is so good. That is so far. I love watching that. And, it, you know, it, it, it that, wouldn't be incorrect to say, Kev how can there? he throw so far with his back hurting? And to, to answer that question, if you're having that. Steroids. Steroids. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Calvin with a turnover approach. This is looking great. Oh my goodness. No. Oh my gosh. That is how you bounce back after a bogey. People are walking by. I think that was Madison Walker. I just want to see Calvin just get psyched <laughs> just one time. I mean, if that shot doesn't do it, I don't know what is. Chris Dickerson, can he match it? These guys are so good. That's going to hit the base. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that's awesome. Where's our follow flight? You don't see too many fall flights on approaches, but that one was probably deserving of oh so. Oh my goodness. But no, Let's they go three for three on the turnovers. And Drew is skipping long. <laughs> he thought he almost made it. <laughs> I mean, and that's what you're going for at this point. You're just going for highlight yeah. shots and having fun. I love to see him still having a good time. But the uh, the real answer to the why he might not be hurting is I I, I think a lot of the times uh, like small movements like putting and like bending over and picking things hurts more than like throwing a full drive. Mm. Like if you have a crick in your neck, putting is like one of the most annoying things you can do. Kevin, there we go. That is a huge sigh of relief. Big par save. Incredible. Just whoa, barely in. <sighs> yeah, he struggled a little bit on the on the green mm -hmm. today, and that was maybe a more difficult putt than normal, just because of the time of day. He's staring straight into the sun, and even with the dark shades, if you're staring straight into the sun, getting the, the distance right on an elevated basket can be difficult. Yeah, it probably has an effect. Calvin, casually. Look at his scorecard. It's a lot of green. A lot of green in that scorecard. Chris Dickerson, he's at seven under. Got a heated battle. Calvin Heimberg at eight under. Hole 14, par three. Brand new tee pad. Brand new basket location. Oh, really? Yeah, normally this basket's about right here. But now we've taken it back. That's a unique angle. I mean, it, it looks like on paper it's a backhand hyzer, but it the way that it kind of slides back into the left down that hill, mm -hmm. you have to get one to stand up. Oh, Chris Dickerson no, we didn't. is in. A really bad spot and this opens the door for Calvin as we get down here in the closing stretch of the round of the tournament a good tee shot here and he could potentially make two strokes he's going with his trusty eagle he's gonna throw it hard so it flips up a little bit oh no. and just he knew it barely too wide I mean you really have a hard time cutting it any tighter than that mm -hmm. with the shape of the fairway, but a good looking release, but a bad result with a bad kick to the left. Kevin's actually going mid range. It's hyzering. Also just pushing it a little too straight. And he knows that that was a big opportunity. If he, if he had a chance that he really needed to birdie out, This is looking good. And that is a great shot. And Eric Oakley there rocking the Apollo Anton Ono speed skater look for some reason. <laughs> that guy was a superstar during that Olympics. That was amazing. <laughs> Chris from way out of position going A2. 
That is going to be most likely a bogey. Can Calvin find anything through the woods here? If so. Oh, no. He is deep in there. Yeah, there can be some bad places off to the left. Look like he's been a rock out there, and they oh. are both going to have circle two looks to save par. Yeah. Man, just a bit more height, a bit more stability. One of the two, and that may have worked, but that is going to be a challenging putt. Kevin's laid his approach up perfectly. He'll have a tap in. And Calvin from 46 feet to That's save big. the par. It's pretty downhill, too. He's asking for it to slow down. So there will be zero pars for Calvin Heimberg in the last nine holes. This is to tie it up. Oh, oh my goodness. What an incredible effort from back there. And just like Kevin Jones putt in the last hole, that went in. And that putt was almost the exact same, just a fraction off. Drew oh, able wow. to pick up the birdie. He loves to, to see that. And you know, it's not out of the question that Drew can actually make a run for third place. And there is a difference in payout and bonuses and yeah. all that. Oh, yeah. So Drew still has something to fight for with these final holes. Anything can happen. Potential huge door opening opportunity was shut by both Calvin and Chris taking bogeys. And look at that. Chris Dickerson with three rounds coming into this. Calvin only won. Chris is gone. Par, par, birdie. And yeah, out of, the last, the par. out of the last four holes, this shot right here is the biggest shot. This is the tightest gap. And Drew Gibson able to hit the gap cleanly with a flip up mid range. That's that is beautiful. A thing of beauty. And as a local, it's crazy to me to see people just come through Charlotte, hit the gauntlet like it's nothing, and just walk on. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty incredible. See, look at this. Kevin decided oh. to play his new gauntlet. <laughs> Oh, wow. what? all the way up there, too. <laughs> <laughs> a sarcastic turn and wave to the crowd and shaking the hands with Zach Melton. <laughs> Meant to do it. Meant to do it. Yeah, it's amazing to see these players throw back in on this hole. <laughs> this is beautiful. Don't, don't. Oh, and it did. And it's a sarcastic fist edge. Punch. Yeah, and that is going to be a tricky putt. Calvin, though. With Chris hitting the gap, needs to get through the gap to give himself. Oh, I don't know what that is. Is that a rock, Jerm? Yes. Oh, and man, that was just a fraction away. That disc was bending to the left and flipping up at the same time, and it was just a couple inches short. Is, there, is that an OB line right it's there? It's not. What's it's just a on? casual relief area okay. from 16's tee pad. Okay. And Calvin's left himself a, a somewhat difficult tester putt from 20 feet. Chris is going to have an opportunity to tie things up when just a couple holes ago, he was down three. And you can see Chris is looking straight into the sun. This is great. With Calvin looking on. He got it. Yeah. Yes. Wow. This there guy we go. Is, is that even spinning or is it just it's barely rotating? Uh, he is automatic, man. Now the pressure you feel it in yeah. the air. Yeah. Huge putt. We are tied <laughs> with three, three to holes go, to dude. Go. This is amazing. 
Kevin has this for par. <laughs> Drew trying to listen in. <laughs> Listening in. Yep. <laughs> he can be funny. Drew, give him that. He can Drew be, funny. be really funny. He's a funny guy. And he's brutally honest. And he's has he's a very he has a very Drew Gibson sense of style and humor. Yeah. And he is <laughs> <laughs> and he is making moves right now on Kevin Jones. And look at this. The previous rounds, not a birdie yet on this hole for Chris or Calvin. And that makes perfect sense because it's one of the hardest holes. I mean, you're teeing off from open. See. You're going uphill through a small gap and then back downhill, back to the left. Uh huh. This hole's got it all. Definitely one of the harder par threes out here. Oh, he did that twice in a row. Chris lining up the M3. Pushing that right side gap, staying oh, straight. Oh, wow. That's going to stable out, too. Oh. <sighs> that is so good. And that, talk about match play here. Think about that this. Is huge. Calvin with a three stroke lead. Now, all of a sudden, all the pressure is on him to not trail. Yeah, he's got to pipe this gap to not be back a stroke. And the crowd knew it, too. I mean, wow. they love seeing that gap get hit. Wow. So he's going with the stable eagle. That's a good throw. Oh, oh but it no. has caught no. a late tree and it just needs to push forward just an ounce more energy and he's down there parked. Drew from way back, he'll have a long putt for par. Maybe he'll be able to make that for a slow mez opportunity. But this is the this is the putt that matters here. This is a big one. Oh, a great effort from 90 feet, but Chris is going to have an opportunity to take a stroke with only two left. Drew Gibson. Oh, wow. He's in for the par, and there it is. There's the slow mez. Dude, we do have a little battle going on for third. And all of a sudden. Kevin has to make this to keep a two-stroke lead over Drew. Kevin Jones. He's coming back to Drew. And there's a battle going on now for third and fourth. Yeah. Oh, that is just part. What a clutch. I mean, 16 feet away on 16. Look at this back nine he's putting together. Incredible. One par, one oh, bogey. He gives it up. You just love to see that. Oh, these guys are homies, you know? That I mean, is awesome, though. Southeast competitors. These guys are playing against each other on tour, but off tour, you know, we're still playing tournaments. You know, we're yeah. still playing local regional events. Well, and I'm thinking back to that Florida tournament where they both shot like 1080 for the event. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, 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 these guys have played against each other for years. And so, yeah. you know, there's a lot of camaraderie going on, a lot of intensity. And oh my goodness gracious, there is just two holes left to go in the season. And you can see there, Chris has had some success and some struggles on this hole. Calvin birdied it the one time he's played it. He's going to need a birdie out, realistically, to have any chance. And that might not be enough with Chris Dickerson. I know he's had tremendous success on hole 18. You have to throw the exact distance to get it right here on this hole. Otherwise, yep. you do not have a look up the alley. And the gap is pretty small, too. The initial gap that you have to hit. Oh, that looks too straight. No. Oh, he got it. No, that's perfect. Right? Slow down. You want that like two feet shorter. Yeah, he's gonna have to. <laughs> he's gonna have to. And, and you don't say that many times when a disc isn't going out of bounds. But you just like two feet less, please. Mm -hmm. But that's the way it is here in Charlotte. You, there's so many shots where you have to land in a very small landing zone, and and if you outdrive it, yeah, sorry, he, he might have to go patent pending versus just a straight putter shot. Calvin going AVR X three, I think. 
and his forward skip. And okay. Looks like he's got the angle. He'll certainly Maybe. be able to throw uh, without the tree being in the way, I don't think. I think he should be able to make a, a good effort. And these are four great drives. Indeed. A couple maybe just a bit short, a couple maybe just a bit long, but you're not going to see too many better. Oh. oh, and Calvin knew it was parked. It got that late tree. So Calvin, Oh, he's going to have to go forehand. Warren Anheuser just a bit short of the corner. But this fairway opens up pretty good for the Foreign Anheuser. So this isn't a bad thing. But he's overturned it. A decent forward skip, but Calvin is going to be 50 plus feet yeah. away. That's huge. And Chris knows it. He can seal the deal right here. Okay, it looks like he is lining up the straight shot. Yeah, he has he has oh, that yeah. perfect lane. And he's thrown a great shot. And Chris has just a few feet away from... If Calvin doesn't make his putt, Chris can lock it up. I couldn't tell for sure, but it sounded like that was Calvin cheering Chris's disc on. Yeah, it wouldn't back. surprise me. I mean... Yeah. Calvin even said go there for, yeah. for Drew. I mean, I mean, what a guy. Mm-hmm. Outside circle two. And Drew, can he make the big putt here? Are you oh, kidding me? There He's we making go. it right. He is now tied with Kevin Jones. Look at this little stretch for Drew Gibbs, and he is three under in the last four and a huge highlight putt. Wow. And this is a beautiful setting to play disc golf. It really is. This right here, folks, is about as big of a putt as you can really line up. Oh my gosh. Dude. Ice water. Oh. And we, we give Calvin, look at that, just sends it. <laughs> we give him a hard time about not showing emotion, but that is his game face. He is stoic. He is engineered and structured to be that way. And he just, he's a killer, man. He's a stone he cold really killer. Is, man. <laughs> Kevin to go to three under. And now this is an equally huge putt. Match play pressure back on you, Chris. Going through the routine. Wow. Yeah, you could tell that he just didn't get the legs involved like he normally does. You know, the nerves are present. And he was a, there. a little bit further away than I th thought he was. Yeah. And, folks, we got a tie ball Dude. game for second and or for first and second. Going into 18, too, Jerm. <laughs> I mean, it's 486. It's downhill. Uh, Chris Dickerson. Birdie? No, he Birdie. hasn't. Birdie on Dude. the 486 <laughs> foot par three final hole 18. I think he's going to like his chances if he can birdie this one one more time. But he probably knows he's birdieing it already. <laughs> well, he's got to watch Drew and, and Calvin. And Drew's going Wraith here, which is, I mean, he's got to think about throwing it too hard unless he's just going for the ace. He's going for Sports Center, baby. This is the most beautiful flight. Oh. <laughs> oh. No. Well, he's given the crowd something to cheer for. He's gone out of bounds. But this is for the Tour Championship. Calvin lining up the eagle. The eagle, folks. 486. Cool. He has got the opportunity to put the pressure right back on Chris Dickerson. A good drive here could win the tour championship. A good release. Turning over. If that can stay up, that'll get... Okay, that's a that's right decent shot. Mm -hmm. We've 
we've seen Calvin make probably about a hundred pucks this season alone, <laughs> right longer than that. And Chris is also going fairway. This is an F one, guys. It's crazy. It's uh, far. It's a far shot for an F one. High, turning over. Oh my oh, goodness! It beat it. Oh my goodness. Oh my. This hole is renamed Chris Dickerson 18. Hole 18 brought to you by Chris Dickerson's four birdies in a row on this hole. That's nasty. Unbelievable. I mean, Kevin even KJ is going driver. Yeah, and, and Kevin has an opportunity to seal up third place with a birdie on this one. And he has slid up to circle's edge. Oh, that's right. Drew's out of bounds. He's mm -hmm. parring at best. And here it is. For so, solo third place. And potentially the last putt of the 2019 season. Yeah! <laughs> Going out the way he came in. <laughs> Huge putt. Kevin Jones. That is so beautiful. <laughs> that is awesome. And a great run for Drew Gibson to get back into the mix. He's going to have to sell for fourth place. Kevin Jones, third place. But this, oh, this is huge. This is what you came for right here. Was that close? I mean, in and then out. And Chris Dickerson has this left to be the first time repeat champion of the Disc Golf Pro Tour. He's had to play all four rounds to get here. And folks, he has done it. Wow. Chris Dickerson, unbelievable. This is. Chris Dickerson's run through this is essentially like, in a way, it's kind of like an eight seed making it to the final four yeah. and winning the the basketball national championship in March Madness. I mean, he had to play the whole way through. Yeah. Chris finishing at nine under. The score that he shot the day before. Yeah. First back to back in 2019, Disc Golf Pro Tour champion Chris Dickerson. Yeah. yeah. So once again, we are ending a season praising the efforts of the Limestone Tennessee product, Chris Dickerson, his wife, Brittany, in attendance, Jeff Spring, the new Disc Golf Pro Tour manager, there to bring you the announcement that Chris Dickerson is our champion once again. An incredible effort on his part to claw back down three going into the back nine, or in, in the middle of the back nine, and he wins by one stroke over... Calvin Heinberg, one of the hottest players on tour. All right, there's a look at his season. Third place finish at Jonesboro, fourth at Green Mountain, but only playing four Pro Tour events and then becoming a <laughs> champion. What a, what a year. And we got to give a shout out to Paul McBeth, who was the regular season champion. Oh, really? Ricky Wysocki, the second place regular season, and Simon Lazat, who was third place. So, And what a year it's been, Germ. It has been an honor to play in it. It's been an honor to bring it to you. Thank you guys so much for being a part of the Gemma's Pro Founders Club. We need you for 2020, folks. Yeah, we sure do. I'm 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 not crying, you're crying. <laughs> Dude, I'm just, it's so sad. So many goodbye <laughs> hugs. I mean, it's Monday after the event. We've said the, goodbye to all our all our homies. Yeah, all our friends are going home. We're all doing our regional things. Some of us are traveling. Some of us are going to hang out with you. We'll see you guys in 2020, folks. Thank you. Yeah.